Welcome to another episode of Church for Men. And today we're going to be talking about the fall. And uh, my name is Nate Bigby. I am lead evangelist here at Gulf Coast Christian Church. And we are excited to have you with us this morning. Uh, we've got a great time today. You know, we've been talking about David and his mighty men and how we can act as men with everything going on around the world today. And it's been an incredible time. Um, and today we're going to dig into more of David's life, more with his mighty men and talk, start to talk about the fall. You know, David was an incredible man of God, of God. In fact, the scriptures say that he was a man after God's own heart. What a reputation he had. And that's something for all of us to strive after. But let's go ahead. We're going to dig right into the scriptures today. We don't have a uh, sports video today. We're going to go right to God's word. So uh, welcome once again. Let's jump on in. So today we're going to be starting from 2 Samuel verse 11. Or I'm sorry, chapter 11, verse 1. And it says, in the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, she is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him and he slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly unclean, uh, uncleanness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. So David sent this word to Joab, send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent him to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked him how Joab was, how the soldiers were, and how the war was going. Then David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah left the palace and a gift from the king was sent after him. But Uriah slept at the entrance to the palace with all his master's servants and did not go down to his house. David was told Uriah did not go home. So he asked Uriah, haven't you just come from a military campaign? Why didn't you go home? Uriah said to David, the ark and Israel and Judah are staying in tents. And my commander Joab and my Lord's men are camped in the open country. How could I go to my house to eat and drink and make love to my wife? As surely as you live, I will not do such a thing. Then David said to him, stay here one more day and tomorrow I will send you back. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. At David's invitation, he ate and drank with him and David made him drunk. But in the evening, Uriah went out to sleep on his mat among his master's servants. He did not go home. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it with Uriah. In it, he wrote, put Uriah out in front where the fighting is fiercest, then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. So while Joab had the city under siege, he put Uriah at a palace where he, or sorry, at a place where he knew the strongest defenders were. When the men of the city came out and fought against Joab, some of the men in David's army fell. Moreover, Uriah the Hittite died. Okay, this is insane, right? This is like a telenovela. You look at this and like all these crazy things are happening with David. So he sees this woman bathing here. He invites her into the palace. He sleeps with her. She gets pregnant. Then he brings Uriah back home, tries to get Uriah to sleep with his wife so that the pregnancy can be blamed on Uriah or it would just, you know, be natural. Doesn't work the first time. So then he gets Uriah drunk, then tries to send him again with his wife. Uriah has so much character. He refuses to. He goes, listen, the rest of the guys who are out fighting right now, they don't get to be with their wives. They don't get to be in comfort. So I'm not going to either. So he refuses it again. So David then goes, okay, I'm going to have Uriah killed then and we'll make it look as natural as possible. Send him out front and then retreat 
and he'll get killed. And that's exactly what happens. It's this tragic story. It's the fall of David, if you will. You know, he's been at so many incredible points in his life already. You know, we talked about how he was in despair in the cave of Adullam, but then he comes back up and he gets appointed king. And that's where he's at right now. And yet for some reason, David decides to go and do this hideous act. You know, and here in 2 Samuel 23, the story becomes even more interesting. This is a list that they're going through of the 37 of 37 of the uh, mighty men that were closest to David. And look at the two names that I have highlighted here. One of them is Iliam, the son of Athropheth, the Gileonite. And the other one down in verse 39 is Uriah the Hittite. So what we find out is that David's mighty men, two of his mighty men, one was Bathsheba's father, and one of his mighty men was actually Uriah the Hittite, Bathsheba's husband. So these are some of David's closest guys. These are a part of not his closest inner circle, not the three, but a part of this group of 37 men who would die for him in a moment's notice that he had a deep relationship with. And yet even with these guys, he would do something so ugly and so despicable as to sleep with her, with Bathsheba. And the worst part is that that's the very first question that David asks, right? He sees her um, and in and, and verse three here, it says, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said she is Bathsheba, Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So right after David finds out, he goes, okay, or he sees her bathing. Then he goes, who is she? He finds out that these are some of his, you know, this is a relative of or wife and daughter of some of his closest guys. And he still brings her to the palace to sleep with her. It's this massive fall. And, you know, one of the huge things and what we're talking about today is the fall, because I think there are a lot of guys who are in despair. There's a lot of doubt right now. There's a lack of hope in many areas of our world. And it's important for us to know what happens. How do we fall and how can we prevent it? And one of the key things that he says right here in the beginning, 2 Samuel 11, in the spring at the time when kings go off to war, David sent Joab out with the king's men and the whole Israelite army. And then just at the last part of that scripture, it says, but David remained in Jerusalem. David was being idle. David was supposed to be out at war with the rest of the men. He was supposed to be on the battle line with Uriah and with Iliam and with Joab and with all his guys. And yet he decided to stay back and take it easy at the palace. He got idle. And then all of a sudden, of course, when you're not doing anything, when you're not busy serving God, then Satan gets that opportunity to present you with something enticing to pull you away. Um, I'm excited about today. We've got a couple of guys from our congregation. We have Cesar and Lee, and they're going to be joining us as we discuss and talk about as men. How can we, you know, what, first, what are other things? What are things that cause us to fall spiritually or to fall into sin? And how can we pre uh, prevent them? So um, I'm going to pull these guys here on the stream. Guys, it's great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, you know, you just heard what we were talking about, the scripture with David, his fall, this, you know, this ridiculous crime that, uh, or it's kind of this like rolling set of things that he does against this family and against God. How can we, you know, how can we prevent ourselves from making similar types of mistakes as David did? Well, I think you said it right there, Nate, uh, with the passage that you pointed out. Um, David, King David was idle. You know, it said from the very beginning in the spring at the time when kings go off to war and David stayed behind. I think it's just um, a fight to fight against idleness and to uh, find ways to be proactive so that we're not just sitting home uh, twiddling our thumbs, so to speak, and uh, just remaining, uh, finding ways to be engaged, you know, with our families, finding ways to be engaged with our friends, 
Uh, you know, I know right now in the middle of this pandemic, it's it's not easy to do that. You know, we're not able to see each other face to face, but there are ways that we can still interact through technology. Uh, and we just got to find ways to uh, engage with that. Hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. Cesar, what do you think, man? Um, I definitely agree with uh, with Lee and um, uh uh, one thing that I was uh, uh, thinking about while you were uh, uh, talking was that uh, you know what you struggle with. You know what uh, what things can get you in trouble. And um, one thing that I uh, try to do my best is to uh, stay away from those things. Um, you know, stay away from from things that uh, will get you in trouble. If I if, if uh, getting in the computer or getting on the phone, getting on Facebook. Uh, you know, you start looking at, uh, you know, not the first intention to, like David, wasn't to go out there in the, uh, in the Terrence and looking around, but that's what happened. And, um, and we probably should be doing something at that moment, like just like David supposed to be uh, going to war, um, we're supposed to be doing something at home. Uh, and, uh, and if we're not doing something at home, then we need to make ourselves you know, at schedule, make, make something to do so that uh, we are uh, busy, not just uh, uh, on the computer or uh, on on the TV uh, that, uh, that will make us struggle uh, and fall. So I um, uh, think that uh, definitely will help helps me is to uh, uh, summer day uh, praying and uh, and just throughout the day. And uh, and also just uh, in God's word to help me to be focused on the day and what I'm doing, and uh, and and just uh, um, schedule the things that I need to uh, that I need to be doing and doing that. So. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great point. Making sure that we stay away from you know knowing ourselves enough to kind of know, hey, first of all, what are the things that make me struggle. And then staying away from those, you know, and I appreciate you talking about purity, you know, um, it's exactly what David is struggling with here. And, you know, and that's where it started from him. I don't think he ever meant when he first saw Bathsheba, oh, yeah, I'll, I'm going to murder her husband. Like that's, you know, I, I don't think he started there. And yet so many times we go through these rabbit holes, right, mm -hmm. where we start with something that might seem like a small or insignificant um, you know, lapse or sin. And yet it's a rabbit hole that continues to take us down this line further and further and further. And, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, purity and pornography. And I mean, it's so easily available, you know, these days and age, you know, David didn't have a cell phone you know, he could look at, but he was walking around on the terrace. And, you know, that's, that's such a huge, I think it's a huge struggle for a lot of men, especially right now as, TV time is up, sitting time is up, and um, a lot of there's not a lot of activity with a lot of guys going on right now. Um, what what can we fill as men trying to act like God, um, trying to be like God, trying to follow Jesus? What can we? What should we do? You know, if we if we have a week, or you know, maybe we don't have a job or something. What do we do? with the time that we have so that we don't, you know, th th to help prevent ourselves from becoming idle, or if we are idle, how do we turn that around? What, what do we put in its place? Well, number one, if you don't have a job, I hope their, their full-time job is looking for a job. Uh, but uh, I think also, you know, take advantage of our family time. Um, you know, I know for myself, uh, I'm, I'm mostly a stay at home dad. I'm in grad school, so I keep pretty busy just by default, but there are times where I'm overly intentional, where I schedule time to engage with my daughter. I schedule time to be with my, uh, wife and we just do things around the house and, um, you know, or we just go around the neighborhood. Uh, we walk, we socially distance, of course, uh, from, everyone else, but we find ways to uh, say hello to our neighbors. And, um, you know, it just takes an extra uh, 
type of creativity, I think, to uh, to go about it in especially in today's environment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, looks like we less we lost uh, Cesar from the stream here, but. Um, yeah, I love that spending time with our families doing things, you know, if um, If we have families to, to spend as much time as we can with them um, You know, I even think about man digging into God's Word is so you know can be something that really helps us out or spending time serving You know, there's if you go through the Bible, there's tons and tons of things that we can do um, spiritually in order to uh, to stay away from idleness. Cesar, we got you back on. Um, did you want to add anything to what Lee was saying there? It looks like uh, we're trying to talk, but we can't get you there. Oh, man, it's all right. So, um, Anyway, it's, uh, yeah, idleness is a tough one. What are some other things that cause us as men to trip up, to fall? What are some major issues that you guys have uh, found right now um, as you, you know, talk to friends and neighbors and deal with things yourselves? Well, I think for me, it's, um, you know, uh, People who are by themselves, they're they're isolated and they're they're not uh, try finding ways to connect with others. Um, I know before I was married, I was that way, and I had to very I had to be very uh, proactive in letting other men that were close to me know, you know, what was going on uh, in my world in my life, uh, so that I could always uh, find ways to connect with God and find ways to connect with others. Um, What was your what was the other part of your question? I'm sorry. Uh, just asking what you know, what are some other things that cause us to trip up and stumble? OK, OK. Well, I, I also think that uh, what uh, Cesar was uh, alluding to, uh, you know, it's 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 things online. It's it's things that, uh, uh, you know, can really hurt us if we're not if we're not careful if we don't have on our spiritual blinders, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of online content right now, obviously, that people are are intaking. You know, one of the things that I've talked a lot to different guys about um, recently who have called me up and uh, they just shared, hey, you know, I'm having a really tough time with anger with either, you know, relationships from work or, you know, with different family members. And so I think, you know, a lot of this isolation and kind of being trapped and cooped up, so to speak, and not being able to go about our normal lives for a lot of guys has brought anger, um, maybe that was pent up and underneath for a long time, but it's brought it up to the surface. Um, Lee, you are a mild mannered and awesome brother. How do you keep calm um, in, in these difficult times? How do you uh, keep anger at bay? Exercise. <laughs> I have to, uh, I do a lot of, uh, you know, uh, body weight stuff, a lot of push ups. And I kid you not, it, it releases a lot of endorphins. And a, after a good sweat, uh, I'm, I'm really, I feel a lot better. You know, and I think for a lot of men, you know, some men like to exercise, some men don't, you know, but that that's one of my outlets that I have to use. Uh, mm -hmm. that and just, um, you know, every now I go outside, I, I just I keep myself busy. And I and the first and the other thing, too, number one, is that as a Christian, as a disciple, I'm making sure that I'm connecting with with God. I'm praying every day. I'm in I'm in the scriptures. Uh, if I'm not reading the Bible, I listen to it in my car uh, as I'm driving. I'm always uh, trying my best to be engaged and I'm not perfect at it, you know, but, you know, I, I have found on a, on a practical level when I'm actively praying, when I'm actively reading the Bible, when I'm, you know, in releasing endorphins through sweat and exercise, then I'm usually better off at the end of the day. Yeah, I love that working out. That is 
is definitely helpful um, to, you know, release some of that energy and yeah, praying. And, uh, you know, I'm excited right now as a congregation, all the guys are praying together on a daily basis for the next couple of weeks, which I think, you know, it's, it's helped me, I feel like with, you know, uh, my family, and I know it's helped some of the other guys as they're able to pray together and just go to God and be open and honest. It provides a great time for that as well. Uh, which I think is just, you know, it's so crucial for all of us right now um, to use this time, you know, and it's kind of a combo deal, right? If you spend more time loving uh, your family or your friends right now when we're together, then it helps to not be so angry at them. I think we have an opportunity to choose what we do with the time that we have. Uh, we can either let Satan tempt us and get the best of us with either, you know, pornography, internet, anger, um, debauchery, where we're just cruising through tons and tons and tons of media in a given day, or we can use this time to get closer with our families, to get closer with our friends, to get closer to God. Um, idleness is not a result of anything external. It's absolutely up to us what we decide to do with our time, you know. Uh, I recently I started reading a ton of different books. So, you know, I'm reading like four books right now all at the same time. And it's been helping me to focus more on God and to be more godly and spiritual. So, um, yes, Lee, thank you so much for jumping on today. Thank you so much, um, for your encouragement and just the way that you live your life. I think you're such a man of God and, uh, just appreciate you so much sharing what you did today. So thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, that comes to the end of our Church for Men series today. If you'd like to pray, if you'd like to get connected, um, if you would just like to chat, please shoot me an email at gulfcoastchristian at gmail.com. You can check us out on our website over at gc3.church. We've got a ton of different ways that you can connect and get involved. And I'm really excited in two weeks from now, we're going to be having um, a guest speaker, and his name is Vince Pierce, and he is from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. He is the lead minister up there, and he's going to be talking about extreme humility with us. So you definitely don't want to miss uh, that episode. It's going to be a great time. We're going to keep div digging into David's life because he was absolutely a man of extreme humility. Let's continue to act as men as God wants us to be. Have a great day.